Why did I decide to film today? Volkswagen's SUV lineup is a lot like a set of Russian dolls. The big doll is a Volkswagen Touareg, and below that is the Tiguan. And if you look below that, you'll find the T-Rock. And at the very center of this metaphorical doll is this, the VW T-Cross. Think of it like this. If the T-Rock is a crossover version of the Golf, then the T-Cross is essentially a polo on stilts. In fact, you can watch our in-depth polo review by clicking the link in the top right-hand corner. But as is the case with most crossovers, the T-Cross can be considerably more expensive than the polo. So what I want to know is, is it worth the premium? If you use your imagination and squint a little bit, the T-Cross looks a bit like a baby version of the Touareg because you've got this massive grille that's slightly rounded off at the edges, but it still dominates the front of the car. Now, being an R-Line, ours has a slightly different look to the other models in the range, and that's highlighted by this body-coloured bumper that runs through a faux grille. Now, if you go for one of the standard cars, instead of that being body colour, it's a metal finish. Moving further back, if you go for the R-Line, then you'll get this little cool design with R-Line written on it. Uh, but it's the back end that I'm the most interested in because you get this cool little tail light and reflector cluster at the back. And it reminds me of cars from the 90s, particularly something like a Nissan 300ZX or a Mazda RX-7 of where the tail light cluster would be blacked out and the lights would just poke through whenever you hit the brakes or put the lights on. I like that they didn't just copy the back end of the Polo and dump it onto the T-Cross. This really sets the car apart from the rest of Volkswagen's SUV range. There are five different trim levels to choose from when specking a T-Cross. Entry-level S models cost £18,360 and come with LED headlights and lane keep assistance. Add an extra £1,850 for the SE and you'll get manual air conditioning and front assist, which slams on the brakes when someone walks out in front of the car. The £23,070 SEL adds 17-inch wheels to the mix, while the £24,970 R-Line comes with sporty looks, 18-inch wheels, dual-zone climate control and a digital instrument cluster. There's also a special United Edition for £20,410, which comes loaded with a bunch of semi-autonomous safety features like emergency braking and adaptive cruise control. One of the things I love about Volkswagen products is that even though something like the T-Cross is quite low down the range, all the areas that you touch feel like they've come from a £50,000 car. The steering wheel's wrapped in leather and in this R-Line model it's got these beautiful grips around where your hands fall so it feels like you're behind the wheel of a Golf R. The seats are part leather, you've got a little bit of leather around the edges here but it's mainly fabric in the centre and you've also got suede on the edges for a sporty feel and you also get the R badge again on R-Line models. The only disappointing aspect of the cabin is the plastics do feel a little bit cheaper around the doors and there's also scratchy plastics on top of the dash. Now on a Polo, that's a soft touch surface, so I'm not really sure why they've taken that out and put a cheaper version on what is a more expensive product. Like the Polo, all models come with an eight inch infotainment screen that is really slick to use, very, very sharp, nice and responsive. You could say that it's lacking a little bit of color, but this is a Volkswagen after all, it's meant to be understated luxury. It's worth pointing out that all models, except the entry-level car, come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it would be worth upgrading just for that alone. It is really a very handy feature. Now, something I get really excited about in cars is the instrument cluster, because I absolutely love digital systems. Now, on most T-Cross models, you'll get a hybrid, which is uh, analog dials and there'll be a small little display in the center. It's the same system that you get on a Polo and I'm really not a fan of it because it is really very basic. But on R-Line models you get a digital instrument cluster as standard and it really is one of the best in the business. It's incredibly slick, really responsive to your inputs and it just gives you so much data. So if you're driving along and you want the sat-nav to appear on the center of the screen, you can do that. 
Now, like I said, it does come as standard on our line models, but you can spec it on other cars in the T-Cross range. And I really recommend you do so because it makes your car go from feeling like a budget crossover to a luxury SUV. One of the annoying things with SUVs today is that they have these sloping rear roof lines, which give it a more sporty look, but does have an impact on headroom. That's not an issue in the T-Cross though, because it's got quite a tall roof line. I'm 180 centimeters and I've got plenty of headroom. So if I was six foot, there's definitely a decent 10 to 15 centimeters still to go. I got the driver's seat in my position and because you're kind of sat more upright in an SUV, you've got plenty of leg room to work with as well. Now, if you sat in the middle, it's worth noting that there is a chunky transmission tunnel in the center of the floor. Now it's quite thin, but it's still a little bit obstructive. Uh, but if you're not sat in the middle, unfortunately there's no armrest to bring down with cup holders. Nevertheless, you've got isofix points at the bottom of the seat here. So fitting a child seat should be nice and simple. A little bonus is you've got two USB sockets here so you can charge your phones on the go. And there's also a little tray above them. Boot space really depends on how you position the rear sliding bench. Move it further forwards and you'll crush the legs of adults sitting in the back, but you'll open up 455 liters of boot space. Move the rear bench back and you'll get 385 liters. Either way though, you get more space than you do on a VW Polo and it matches the bigger brother, the T-Roc. Under the bonnet of our T-Cross R-Line is a 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine. Now in this model, it produces 148 brake horsepower and has a claimed combined MPG of about 43. Now I'm gonna tell you about the rest of the engine lineup in voiceover because I'm getting soaked out here. Sitting below the range topping 1.5 litre motor in our R-Line model is a one litre three cylinder petrol engine developing either 94 or 113 bhp depending on which model you choose. There's also a 1.6 litre diesel producing 94 bhp and with a combined fuel economy of 54 mpg it's the most frugal of the lineup. I always think that when you drive a car at this end of the market all the niceties come with a caveat such as, oh, the ride's not bad, given how much it costs, or the engine is much quieter than I was expecting. They're all backhanded compliments, but I'm not gonna be giving any of those to the T-Cross because it really is a very good car to drive. I've spent my day driving on a mix of motorway and on rural roads, and by rural roads, I mean, I've been driving in the New Forest and a lot of the roads are either filled with potholes or are actually made of gravel. But even after driving over some of the harshest bumps in the road, nothing really seems to phase the T-Cross. Cruising along the motorway earlier, the car was immensely quiet. Noise isolation is really good, so you don't get a lot of wind noise coming through. And the engine in this R-Line version is pretty damn relaxed. Now, of course, we've got quite a lot of punch under the bonnet, so making quick overtakes and also getting up to motorway speeds just isn't a problem in this and we've also got the DSG gearbox so you don't need to worry about being in the right gear at the right time. I've been pretty surprised at the fuel consumption as well so VW claims that this car will get on a combined cycle about 43 mpg and at its very best at its most frugal you're looking at close to 44 but after my day of cruising on the motorway and driving on some B roads I've managed to get 47 mpg, which isn't too bad. Not only is the motor nice and responsive, but the steering is really quick and precise as well. Now you might be saying, well, it doesn't really matter on a family SUV, but I always think a good steering system will make even the least confident driver feel as though they're in control of their car. And I think that giving confidence to people behind the wheel is the sign of a really well-engineered car. So the car I'm in here has come with a few semi-autonomous driving modes uh, and they include active cruise control. So when you're driving along and you set a speed, say 70 miles an hour, it'll monitor the speed of the car in front. And if they slow down, you'll also slow down. And if they speed up, you'll speed up until you hit 70. But you can also change the distance between you and where the sensor picks up the car in front. 
So if you're worried about it picking up cars miles in the distance and you suddenly start to slow down, you can narrow that down uh, so that the car only reacts when it comes across a car that's driving really slowly. You don't get a rear-facing parking camera, and that's an option that you need to tick, but we highly recommend you do so because, come on, it's the 21st century. Who looks over their shoulders to park anymore? So is the T-Cross worth the premium over the Polo? Yes for a few reasons. The first is that you naturally sit a little bit higher, so if you do fancy a better view of the road, this is the car to go for. You'll sit much lower if you're in a Polo. Next up is the interior, and while I said earlier that there are some surfaces that feel a bit cheaper compared to the Polo, they're all in areas that you either can't see or you're not really gonna to be touching very often. All the bits that you can see and that you are touching actually feel a bit nicer than the hatchback and you do feel as though you're in a more expensive product when you're sat behind the wheel, particularly if you go for the digital cockpit. I can't stress how good that thing is. And last thing is practicality. Not only have you got a bigger boot in this, but there also feels as though there's more room for people sitting in the back. And I quite like its looks. It's quite a funky looking thing, particularly the back of the car, which has kind of got this almost retro-y look to it. It gives it a really distinct look. Not only does this distinguish it from its rivals, but it also sets it apart from its brothers and sisters in VW's SUV range. Well done, VW. You've really hit the nail on the head with this one. Just because the T-Cross is a new car doesn't mean that you have to pay new car prices. You can head over to yesauto.com and check out all the latest deals on new and used models. And why not subscribe to the channel because we've got more in-depth reviews like this and some slightly more ridiculous ones.